Well, Lee Marvin had just won an Academy, Academy Award, Award yeah. so he must have been uh, living high at that time. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, pretty high. <laughs> Right now, I would like to introduce a man who has done such a great array of roles. You probably know him as the father in Dharma and Greg. But he's done some terrific westerns, uh, including this one right behind me, Monty Walsh. Not the Tom Selleck one, but Lee Marvin, Jean Moreau, and Jack Palance. I'd like to bring up Mitch Ryan. How are you? I'm good, thank you. How was that so far? Very good, so far. <laughs> I just got to get one uh, uh, Slim Pickens thing off my chest. I did a thing called the Honkers, in which he was in, and um, uh, I didn't know anything about all the, the, uh, all the world champions were there. Everybody showed up, Larry Mahan and everybody, and they were, uh, they, I was supposed to be sort of good, and uh, I was, I was sort of drinking in those days quite a bit, and uh, and so I, the director wanted to get a shot of me coming with the door opening, and he said, "Just turn the horse. That's all I want is that your face," and and so Slim is back behind. He's doing that part, you know, with it, you know, and, and gave me the thing and stuff. And he said, he leans over and says, "Don't worry, Mitch. Drunk as you are, you won't get hurt." You may get killed, but it won't hurt a bit. <laughs> and they opened the door and I fell off. <laughs> Did you get hurt? I bruised my leg. <laughs> but I, I valiantly went on. Well, you know, that film, The Honkers, was in 1972. And in yeah. 1972, there were four rodeo movies all at the same time. Yeah. J.W. Coop, Coop that Cliff Robertson wrote and directed. Yeah. It was Junior Bonner, Bonner that Peckinpah yeah. did. It was the uh, the one with Dick Widmark. And then and the, the Honkers. Yeah. And the Honkers was directed. Nobody ever told me what that meant, but because I kept asking, what, what, what's, what's Honkers mean? I mean, because I, I was not a Western actor. <laughs> but... Uh, I came out, uh, I was doing a play for the Theater Guild uh, from Lincoln Center and uh, a Circle in the Square uh, uh, here playing in town at the Lindy Opera House and uh, Bill Fraker and uh, Lee Marvin and uh, Roberts and Landers, I think they were produced it and came to see it and they cast me in this movie. I don't know where they got a 1920s um, Broadway Sharpie <laughs> which is what I played into a, a, a rodeo cowboy, but there it was. Anyway, I went to um, Arizona. I, I somehow got out of the play. They had to buy me out and all that stuff. And, and uh, I went to Arizona and showed up, and uh, there were all these unbelievable cowboys there. And uh, Bear Hutkins, you probably all remember him, and Leroy Johnson, these great stuntmen, incredible. Mickey Gilbert and was did my writing for me. My, I was supposed to be the second best bronc writer in the West, and guess who was first? <laughs> and uh, so I I um, I had a lot to learn in a very fast hurry, and I got a lot of uh, uh, you all know the incredible. Uh, uh, tenderfoot jokes about everything from, uh, he's got his own dressing room, he's got his name on it that says, Mr. Only, men only, so there it is, right? <laughs> I knew it, I knew it, that they'd give him one. So they, they also called me the Lincoln Center Kid. <laughs> and uh, it, was a, it was an incredible experience. I'd never been to Arizona, I'd never been, I'd been to to the West because I, I went to San Diego to boot camp and and uh, but I didn't know anything about anything so I had to learn real fast. 
Who how taught to, you how to ride? Leroy Johnson helped me mm -hmm. and helped me and showed me. He didn't, you know, he just said, relax and, you know, you're, you know, and I picked it up pretty fast because I was athletic and it worked pretty well, but. Well, Lee Marvin had just won an Academy, Academy Award, Award yeah. so he must have been uh, living high at that time. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty high. <laughs> and uh, um, he, he um, Bill, they, they wouldn't shoot him when he drank too much, but uh, uh, because they couldn't, obviously. <laughs> but uh, he didn't miss too many days. He missed a couple, and he, but was, and he was fantastic in the movie. I mean, it was really a beautiful, beautiful movie. And Jack Palance was in it, and this woman from France who showed up, this incredible actress, Jean Moreau, uh, which they went over to get. I mean, they talked her into coming back and doing it. So. Well, she was lovely. I know William yeah. Fraker had yeah. been a uh, director of photography, and this yeah, was the was first great, film he, he directed. He was a great DP, and he, he, he needed a lot of help, and he got it from, you know, and really good, especially Lee was incredible. Because he's, he's got his, you know, everybody has this picture of him, and you all know, if you've worked with him, you know, he, uh, he has his finger on everything. He knows exactly what he needs. He, he knows what wardrobe is, he goes and checks a wardrobe. He, when I was, uh, when we were picking hats, uh, I picked a hat, I sort of liked and put it on, and he was over there and he said, Jesus Christ, I hope he can act. He sure can't, <laughs> he, he sure can't wear a hat. <laughs> Did you change hats? Yeah, I said, he said, here, try this one. Well, that's a little better. <laughs> Now, did you hang out with Lee much on this? Uh, uh, quite a bit. We became great friends eventually, but uh, but uh, he was very busy, you know, trying you know, trying to learn the lines <laughs> and things like that, you know. But uh, later, after we came back to California, I, I I went to his house a lot. We became good close friends. As a matter of fact. Uh, for whatever reason it was, my drinking got really terrible right about that time. This was 69, and for about three years I was in real trouble, and actually I was in that movie over in Spain, which is, uh, what in the hell does all that say? Yeah, I, this is the Oliver Reed movie that... Uh, Gene Hackman. The Hunting Party. The Hunting Party, yeah. That uh, our our pal Arthur Gardner, Arthur, yeah, who produced Arthur yeah. just passed away at about 104 yeah. and a half. He produced the Honkers also. He, yes, he was, yeah. yes, and so he must have liked you. Well, he tried to help me. <laughs> so, but I heard a story about the hunting party where you and Oliver Reed, who's who's not known for showing up on time or <laughs> anything, you know, or, or <laughs> anything other than having a good time. The the two of you just somehow bonded yeah it, it, yeah over uh, about, uh, <laughs> <laughs> anything and, and, handy I guess. and it worked out uh that um we we we, we were on the set all the time and we, we did our stuff but uh we you know we carried on all night long and everything and we were and so it got to arthur was really great arthur came over and said I'm sorry, Mitch, but we got to send you home. Uh, I can't fire Oliver Reed. It's just impossible. So you've got to go. <laughs> how, how long had you been on the film at that time? I shot two weeks, and I had a, I was in every scene. I mean, so I, I had a quite a bit of film, which turned out to be the saving grace of the whole thing. So <laughs> I went home. The actor they hired, Oliver, wouldn't work with. I mean, I don't know how they did movies in those days. I mean, I can't remember how they even got through this thing. But so they fired him, and I guess uh, he told me later that they were around the table talking about what are we going to do. And he said, "Well, let's get Mitch back. At least we got two good weeks on him." <laughs> so I went back, and my agent said, "Oh my God, I, this has never happened in a million years. I mean, it's like incredible." And I, I got. I, uh, it was a good film, actually. It turned out pretty good. Gene, it was a Gene, brutal, a brutal. Brutal, movie. yeah. Gene Hackman was in it, and uh, and um, Candace Bergen. I now, mean, Candace was, Bergen yeah, is is kidnapped yeah. by Oliver Reed, yeah. and her husband 
is Gene, Gene Hackman, who's not a nice guy. Yeah. And the reason that Oliver Reed kidnapped Candace Bergen was to have him learn to read. She was going to teach him oh, yeah, how to yeah. read, but they fell in love. Yeah. So that must have pissed off Gene Hackman. Uh, quite a bit. <laughs> it was kind of hard on Candace, too, <laughs> trying to fall in love with Oliver Reed. <laughs> <laughs> She couldn't keep up with him, is that it? <laughs> well, I don't know what it... <laughs> Now, Gene Hackman, he's a good hand. He could ride a horse. Oh, no, he's he was good. great. Yeah, yeah. And the, the Spanish stuntmen, I don't know whether... They're really wonderful, marvelous, lovely guys. They're marvelous horsemen, but it's a different style, obviously, you know. And uh, <clears throat> about the second or third day, we were coming in off the desert. Everybody's been on the desert for three days or something. And everybody's, you know, coming in like this. And as they got by the camera, the, the, uh, the, the, uh, the uh, Spanish stuntman would come like this to the camera. And they were, <laughs> it was their so, moment. <laughs> I mean, they all wanted to be Italian movie stars. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Subscribe, share, and tell your friends because we and you, we're all going to keep the Western history alive. Thanks. See you soon.